Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. Uh, in front of me I have both a uh, a Traveler 137 on the left and a T-Mobile or AT&T HTC Pure on the right both running Windows Mobile 6.5. Um, I'll kind of show you uh, both of them and I have more videos on, on the specifics of each of these devices uh, because they are a bit different with, uh, with how they're doing some things. Just wanted to show you some of the standard interfaces and uh, functions within Windows Mobile 6. Both devices are, are slightly different in the way they roll out Windows Mobile 6.5. As we can see on the right, the AT&T uh, HTC Pure has a, a four-wide grid, whereas the Traveler 137 uses the more traditional three-wide grid, which honeycomb grid, which we saw on um, on the Windows Mobile um, 6.5 release information earlier on. Uh, it is much more touch friendly. Um, as we can see, this is the new start menu. There is no longer a start menu. This is it. Um, and it has uh, some custom application shortcuts, um, folders, things like that. However, there are some serious issues with this layout. For one, if you were to tap and hold thinking you could move it, all you see is move to top. The only option with any of these icons is to move to top. There's no options for customizing the location of these icons. Uh, you can't add them, you can't delete them, you can't create folders within them. So a lot of the customization that you're used to on a Windows Mobile 6.5 device is actually actually lost in this uh, current implementation, which I find quite odd and, and, and not very user friendly especially for those of us in the Windows Mobile world who are, are used to uh, customization and options. And both devices, as you can see, this one is a, a more generic one. So it has, you know, uh, Internet Explorer, Calendar, Getting Started, Windows Media, the Marketplace for Mobile, My Phone, MSN Weather, MSN Money, Notes. Everything is kind of on this uh, main level, File Explorer, Camera, as we move on down. Um, as you can see, and there should be a settings I probably passed by it already. Live search, and there, yeah, there's the settings. If we tap on settings, some of these has a, have a second level down where there are, again, folders and things like that. However, let me continue on with this particular device. If I jump into something like system, again, we see, okay, there's some nice icons and nice layouts and that kind of thing. But if we go to something like, uh, say, regional settings, oh no, what happened here? Yep, we're back in needing stylus to tap or uh, sharp fingernails to scroll down these tiny little lists to change my time to a 24 hour clock. So, as you can see, it's uh, lipstick on a pig, right? We've got uh, one level of uh, one level of kind of a, a nice user interface, but if we dive down, and especially I found that in, in plenty of the settings, um, some of these other ones, say we have, uh, I won't go to email because I might have some private emails in there. Let me go to another application here and just show you um, a menu. Say we go to uh, calendar will be fine. So we go to my calendar. Now if I tap this menu, as you can see here, there is a more touch-friendly menu system in, in this implementation, in this level of Windows Mobile, which is nice to see. Um, now if I, let's just check and see if I select to have a new appointment. Oh no, here we are, back in the old Windows Mobile interface. So I've got to have a stylus and try to get through some of these times with these little scroll bars. It's just a fail. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's just it's not quite there. They, they've got one level of finger optimization, then if you dive down too far, you get right back into the uh, the older interface, which, you know, for some is, is quite functional and powerful, and, and that's fine. Um, but in today's world, we really, if we're going to have a touchscreen device, I think it needs to be better than that. Um, so this is the start menu. There's the, let me just go through this one on the uh, Pure again real quick, just to kind of show you. Uh, AT&T is, I'll talk about in my HTC Pure Review added quite a bit of bloatware on this one as well, but it has some of the same default ones with settings and then system. 
you know, has some cool icons, you think that's good, and then you jump into, um, who, what is managed programs anyway? You jump into the regional settings, where are they? Regional settings here, the uh, same old stylus need. Okay, so that is a look at the start menu. Now there's a couple other things. There's the lock, uh, lock icon interface, which actually on the uh, HTC model, uh, oh, actually both. You see lock is down on the bottom left on the start menu, and you can also press and hold on the uh, end key. And here's our new lock screen. Now uh, I have one appointment that popped up. There's no other notifications. Um, if I have emails, text messages, they'll actually appear here in uh, in this in this line up here, and then you just simply uh, slide to unlock and then bounce to uh, whatever you need to get to. Let me just show it on the Pharos device. So if we tap on lock, there we go again, and now it shows me that I do have one on this particular one. So if I tap the one, and I I missed it, I guess if you tap it, it uh, it loses it and it's not new anymore. But if you tap it, if you saw that I tapped it, there was an email. I could tap the email; it would go into the email program. It nice thing is it's, it goes into the program that you need. Otherwise, you just press slide and go back out to uh, those things. Now the next part uh, is the uh, is the start menu which is not present uh, not the start menu, excuse me the today screen which on um, the HTC Pure, if I tap today it jumps into the touch float 3D now I can change this um, but on uh, many HTC devices you'll see there's a touch flow 3D implementation and, and all of that now on the Pharos it uses the more standard Windows Mobile 6.5 today so if I scroll back up here, we can go up here to pictures, and um, this is much like the sliding panels that we saw on Windows Mobile 6.1 in uh, the non-touchscreen devices, which I actually found to be uh, quite excellent and really made the non-touchscreen devices quite powerful. So as you can see here, we have those same kind of sliding panels, and I can browse through the pictures, go down, you can get through your music, getting started you could go right and left so as you can see it's just like those sliding panels any calls voicemail time and date text messages emails and you can see I have some emails uh, calendar and then favorites which is your Internet Explorer favorites and then you can add and remove on there as well let's just uh, tap that and it jumps right into my email okay so that is the start screen on the new Windows Mobile 6.5. So what we've seen on 6.5 is we've seen a new start menu, a new today's screen, uh, some menu optimizations, a few utilities such as uh, MSN Weather and Money, which is the stocks. Um, and we saw the new lock screen with some notifications and some other ways to really see information in a glanceable um, glanceable view. So if I go back to my lock screen and there we can see um, there it is. So that is a quick look at uh, just the Windows Mobile 6.5 on both of these devices and a couple of the improvements that you're going to see in the operating system. However, as you also saw in the menus, it, it's still a layer. It's not throughout the whole operating system yet. And there may be uh, 6.5 updates that fix that especially I, I hope that they address this start menu where uh, you can't do any really customizations with that start menu layout except for moving things up to the top